Hello people of YouTube, Jordan here, the PH is silent. We're headed back to Eberron today with some information on dragon marks and the dragon marked houses. To start off, we need to first talk about the draconic prophecy. This is an ancient prophecy that is technically a record of things to come that has been playing out since creation. The dragons observe and record events that are playing out in this prophecy, and it is said that only the dragons with their incredibly long lifespan have the ability and patience to study and understand the prophecy. I get the sense that the prophecy isn't just written plainly, but must be interpreted to understand and thus see the future. It reminds me of those Nostradamus fanatics looking for meaning and future events within his writings. The dragon marked are a part of this prophecy. Once the dragon marks occurred just for dragons. However, in recent years, well, recent for dragons, these marks started appearing on the lesser races of Eberron. A dragon mark is a kind of intricate birthmark. It's actually more than a birthmark and more distinct than a tattoo. There are 12 recognized dragon marks that are associated with a specific bloodline. Well, there were 13, but since the fall of House Vol, the mark has vanished from Corvair. It is possible to get a dragon mark that is not from these 12 houses, and those are called aberrant marks. They are unusual marks that are not recognizable outside of the 12, but these aberrant marks can also be known marks that are on the wrong race, outside of the normal bloodline. These marks give the person a special kind of magical power. For example, the mark of healing is specific to halflings and is from House Dracasso. Someone with the dragon mark is inherently better at healing than someone without it. Mechanically, for 5th edition, someone with this dragon mark can spend their own hit die to heal another. The mark is in shades of blue and purple and appear to move and shimmer when observed. They become warm and glow when the dragon mark person utilizes their power. The mark can be anywhere really across your eye or on the palm of your hand. A dragon mark can even grow in size and complexity if a player focuses their character on a path that enhances their dragon mark. In 5th edition, this means taking certain feats that expand the power of what your dragon mark can do. In Corvair, only a small number of dragon marked actually have this expansion. These people are cherished and are often used because of their extra powers. Due to the power of these dragon marks, the families or bloodlines associated with them have risen to greater power. They were politically kept in check for a while, but that changed with the last war. Many nations still wanted to contain the power of the dragon marked houses, but the war vastly increased demands for goods and services from these houses. A specific and significant case would be House Caneth, creating warforged and other machines of war. House Jercasso was very sought after to heal the injured and get them fighting again. Profits for these houses soared and they were able to financially put themselves in a better place politically. After the war, there are those that wish to keep the houses in check again. Some efforts have been made, like the Treaty of Thornhold, which called for the destruction of the Creation Forges. Now, the interesting thing about these houses is that they are not bound by national borders and often worked for whomever during the last war. The war was terrible, but it was profitable and elevated the dragon marked houses in Corvair. With a new war looming on the horizon, many nations are trying to make ties with the dragon marked houses in hopes they can be allies in any future conflicts. It's interesting to think about where Eberron's history is going. Corvair specifically, once the monarchy was in charge and controlled all of Corvair with the dragon marked houses in check, now the nations are divided and squabble, but everyone recognizes the economic power that the dragon marked houses have. And some even say that if peace is going to be truly found, it will be a dragon marked heir that sits on the throne and not a royal descendant. The 12 dragon marked houses are, and here we go with my mispronouncing, <clears throat> House Medani, House Therask, Vidalis, Dracasso, Galanda, Caneth, Orion, Sivis, Denith, Fiarlen, slash Therani, Lorandar, and Kandara. House Medani is the mark of detection. They are a guild house of brokers, bodyguards, and advisors. These members are half-elves. House Therask is the mark of finding. Their heirs make great bounty hunters. Their mark helps guide the hunter to its prey. House Vidalis has the mark of handling. They have a connection to nature and beasts of the natural world. They train beasts for a wide range of purposes. We've spoken about House Dracasso before. They are the halfling house of healing, which is kind of a tongue twister, I just realized. Galanda is the mark of hospitality, another halfling house that has the odd power to keep a place clean and to heat and chill food. It might not seem like much, but they've developed a tavern slash inn network throughout Corvair. They build friendships and deal in favors. Next is House Caneth in the mark of making. People with this mark can mend 
broken things with a touch. They specialized in the creation of the Warforged for the Last War. The Mark of Passage belongs to House Orion. They are able to move at above average speeds, enhancing climbing and jumping, all movement really. And they specialize in travel and the lightning rail is their most important tool. House Civis is the Mark of Scribing. This is a gnomish house with a wide range of gifts. They can translate languages, communicate over long distances, and they can feel words knowing their true meaning. They are a backbone in long distance communication. The mark of the Sentinel is House Deneath, and it warns and protects. They specialize in shielding others from harm. The mark of Shadows is an elvish house divided into two. House Falarin and Therani, they divided shortly towards the end of the last war when a feud broke out between the major families. On the surface, these two are peaceful, but rivalries run very deep between them. The mark of Storm is home to House Lorandar, who are masters of the seas and oceans. With their powers, they have been rumored to control the weather itself, easing it for sailors or turning it against their enemies. And finally, House Kandarek and the Mark of Warding. This house can protect belongings and other things of value. They could use their Mark of Power to keep things safe or for opening locks and stealing the contents. It's a good house for a rogue or a wizard. It might be the perfect house for that dwarf transmuter wizard I want to play. And that's it for today. It's a lot of information, so if you're curious about a particular house, I'd encourage you to read further about it in the Wayfinder's Guide to Eberron. There's a link to it in the doobly-doo below. Special shout out to my patrons on Patreon that keep these videos going. If you'd like to become a patron, click the link at the end of this video. And thanks again for watching everyone. Thank you so much for sharing these videos with your gaming groups and I will see you all in the next video.